Hello everyone, Curious Corduroy here, and normally I don't do reaction content. Uh, I don't think I've ever done a reaction video to anything, but Game Informer is continuing their coverage for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and they put out a video today that they do with most of their coverage where they sit down with the developers from the game and just rapid fire a bunch of questions towards them. They're usually super silly and goofy, but sometimes there are some really great nuggets of info there, and they did one today with Naoki Hamaguchi, who is the director for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So I thought it would be cool to sit down, watch this video, react to it live, uh, which, <laughs> you know, I'm still new to all this. I've never done this before. Um, but in case there's like any cool bits of information that come out, um, it'd be cool to kind of talk about it on the fly instead of sitting down and writing everything down. I think this might just be the better format for this kind of stuff. So I got my blanket because it's very cold here. I got the video queued up. So we're going to check it out and see uh, what Hamaguchi has to say about Rebirth. Game Informer. Are you a good sport? Mm, <laughs> What's the best remake in gaming history? A remake? He's not wrong. FF7 remake. Why did you want to change certain story details with Final Fantasy VII Remake series? <laughs> Do these changes make this a multiverse story? <laughs> so the first one there, does this make it a multiverse story? Obviously there's tons of theories going around out online. I've spewed my own about multiple timelines and it kind of seems like that's the case that it's maybe a multiverse because clearly from what we know, the events of the original FF7 already happened. The characters have gotten visions of that stuff. I've speculated that Aerith and Sephiroth clearly know more than they're letting on. They have more info. So it might be a multiverse thing because it is multiple timelines, but it would be curious to see if at the end of all of this, they somehow tie up all of these different timelines and universes in one go. I'd be very curious to see how they handle that. What's the best multiverse piece of media? Spider-Man's great. Great movies. What was that thing in Remake that kept trying to keep the story elements the same called? Whispers. What were the things in Final Fantasy VII Remake that kept trying to keep the story the same? <laughs> I love that he played the now that the whispers are gone? I don't think they're gone. That's the thing, yeah. Does it at least mean that catching a chocobo is easier this time around? Are all chocobos the same in Rebirth? What kinds of abilities can chocobos have? The sky chocobos, mountain chocobos, we've seen this already. Do all the chocobos smell the same? <laughs> Do they smell pretty bad? Horses aren't that bad. How faithfully does the story of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth follow the original? How is Zack still around? How does Zack being around affect Cloud? Impact throughout the world of FF7. Okay, so obviously there's a lot of speculation on Zack. I think I even have a video going up next week talking a little bit more about Crisis Core and Zack in particular. But so many people have this theory that the events of the Forgotten Capital, which again, spoiler alert for those who haven't played the original, obviously we know what happens there to Aerith. She dies. And the developers have said on many occasions that the ending to the game, the Forgotten Capital in particular, is going to shock people. So what could they theoretically change? And a lot of people have speculated that what if Zack somehow interferes and prevents Aerith's death at the Forgotten Capital? But either way, Zack's role is what I'm, I think I'm most intrigued about. Other than what the heck Sephiroth is doing, I think I am most intrigued by Zack's role. What he's going to do, is he going to meet up with Cloud? Is he going to meet up with Aerith? Is he going to, is my dream of Cloud and, and Zack fighting Sephiroth, <laughs> you know, actually going to happen? Um, I can't wait to see. Why isn't Crisis Core Reunion part of the Final Fantasy VII Remake canon?
Yeah, that makes sense. Reunion is obviously in the original timeline of FF7, and you have to tell that story the way that it is for people to understand who Zack is. Um, but also, like like before, it is in that original canon. So I, I when I went into Reunion, I wasn't fully expecting them to change the ending from what we got in a remake of Zack surviving, because that is obviously in its own separate timeline. So that story has to play out the same way. They can't really change that. Do you think people would still benefit from playing Crisis Core Reunion in order to learn more about Zack? Of course. Crisis Have you ever just great. listened to Final Fantasy music? It's my vibe. <laughs> yeah, it's called a vibe. <laughs> Same. Although I, I do got to give honorable mention to Final Fantasy VIII, um, all of the soundtracks in the Final Fantasy universe are fantastic, but there's something about VIII's soundtrack that just sounds so unique. And the, the, well, the thing about all Final Fantasy songs is that their soundtracks, rather, they perfectly represent the worlds that they come from. And eight is a really great example of that. Eight just has this kind of transitional phase between seven and nine where they're still trying to figure out what kind of instruments they want to use. And there's a lot more synths and kind of like techno vibes going on with eight. It's very futuristic, I guess, is the best way to put it. So, but uh, obviously seven, you know, that was the first Final Fantasy for me. So that soundtrack really uh, stuck with me a lot and seemingly Hamaguchi as well. The best Final Fantasy soundtrack. Ooh. How does the remake series being split across multiple games affect the overall experience? Great answer. And also, I apologize if I'm interrupting the video too much with my own banter. Um, I like that they split it up into three parts. I think you kind of had to. Because if they were planning to make this game from beginning of Midgar all the way to the end with the Northern Crater stuff, we wouldn't be playing it. <laughs> this game would still be in development because it would be massive. It would be like six discs long. There's just feasibly it wouldn't be possible. But I like that they split it up because you can involve a lot more feedback from the fans, especially when it comes to combat. And I've talked about this in previous videos, but even just the leap they had from 7 Remake to Yuffie's DLC with Intermission, they did clean up a lot of combat stuff and made it uh, a little bit more fun. Yuffie's more mobile, she's more fast, she can handle flying enemies better. So one of the great benefits of having multiple parts is that you can take that fan feedback to account, you can see what people really liked, what worked, what didn't work, and that can hopefully inform the next game. What is the best direct sequel in Final Fantasy history? Did Final Fantasy VII Rebirth really need to be on multiple discs, or did you just do that for nostalgia? I, I would love to go back and give um, Final Fantasy XIII that entire trilogy a fair shake. When I was younger, I didn't get very far into XIII before I lost interest, but I feel like people are starting to look more fondly back on XIII and its entire trilogy and are willing to give it a second chance. And from what I hear, um, the sequels are great. So in, in XIII especially, like once it opens up, it takes a while to open up, but once it opens up is when people really start to like it. So I would definitely go back and uh, like to give those games a fair shake and uh, try them out again. <laughs> Were there any other games in the Final Fantasy series that the team considered to remake before settling on 7? Six. Do you think we'll ever get Final Fantasy X-3? <laughs> Can you do your best Titus laugh? <laughs> <laughs> the laugh. You gotta, gotta include the laugh. Tida. Tida, how do you laugh? I can bring it up if we want to do it. It's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> What's the silliest moment in Final Fantasy? I love that he's a good sport. Like, uh, the more I learn about Hamaguchi, the more I like him. He seems like a really cool dude, but it always kind of baffled me how many people misinterpreted that laughing scene between Titus and Yuffie, uh, Yuffie and Yuna, um, because obviously it's supposed to be bad. Like, they're both on this journey and Titus is being so self-serious and Yuna's trying to get him to lighten up so they start to force a laugh out which is what comes out from both characters and they both force out these ridiculous laughs and they both pause and look at each other and realize how silly they're being in the moment which then 
causes them to laugh for real. And one of my favorite shots is you see the rest of the party behind them. I think Waka in particular, they're all looking at them like, what the heck is up with these people? Like, <laughs> have they lost their minds? So I've always appreciated that scene. I thought it was really funny. History. Kafka. Yeah. Kafka is silly, but also very terrifying. What's your favorite moment from the original Final Fantasy VII? I don't know if that's my favorite moment, but it's my favorite moment in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Hell House. Yeah. That's a good one. How does Red 13 ride a chocobo? <laughs> Will we see Red 13 trying to stand on two legs again? <laughs> Does anyone in the party comment how weird it is that he tries to ride chocobos and stand on two legs? What happens if Red 13's tail gets extinguished? <laughs> I've always wondered about that. <laughs> is it like a Pokemon situation? <laughs> Who on the Super Smash Brothers roster did Cloud get along with the best? Mario. <laughs> Mario, <laughs> yeah. I can see that. Most? Oh. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. <laughs> How many times did he tell Mario that he was in Soldier? Did Sephiroth get along with anybody on Smash Brothers? What's the wilder crossover? There's uh, the whole like multiversal thing, timelines. I've often joked that um, the Smash Brothers stuff with Cloud and Sephiroth is a continuation of what we're seeing in the remake universe. <laughs> and that Sephiroth wants to mess with Cloud so much that he followed him into a completely new, new universe of Smash Brothers just to mess with him and wreak havoc. I always thought that was really funny. What's the wilder crossover? Super Smash Brothers or Kingdom Hearts? Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the best summon in Final Fantasy history? Bahamut Zero, yeah. That was a cool one. Zero. 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 I'm partial, obviously, our Sid from 7, because that's the first Sid I was introduced to. Um, but the Headmaster Sid in 8 uh, was cool, especially playing him in Triple Triad. Uh, the Royal Sid in 9 turns into an Oglop, I think is what they were called. Uh, 16 Sid, very handsome man. <laughs> Great voice, so... There's been a lot of great SIDs uh, throughout Final Fantasy. Have you ever bought flowers from someone on the street? <laughs> no, no, no. Do you guys have any black materia around here? <laughs> if you could have any materia to use in your daily life, what would Good you question. choose? Great answer. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> That's a great answer. So you trying that to find out my HP? Answer. Assess material would solve all of your problems. He even says I'll be able to do better interviews too. <laughs> Imagine just like assessing a job before you go apply for it. Or like meeting a random date and assessing them, figuring out like all their likes and dislikes. That's a great choice. I think another choice would just be like a summon material. I would have Carbuncle just to have like a little pet animal with me because <laughs> I have a dog and having like a little carbuncle to come with us on walks would be cool. So you trying to find out my HP? Yes. <laughs> Should I be worried? <laughs> if you could speak to the planet, what would you say? <laughs> what is your promised land? What's your favorite part of Tokyo? I've always wanted to go to Tokyo. Japan in general would be a cool place to visit. What's your favorite place to travel to? What other Final Fantasy game was the biggest inspiration for the remake series? 
っぱ直近その自分がやってた「ファイナルファンタジー13」とかはやっぱり自分も関わってたから何かしらインスピレーションしたものはあるのかなとは思いますね。How much product does Cloud use in his hair? Three分の一ぐらいは使わないとあの硬さにはならないですよね。Which Final Fantasy character has the best hair? まあやっぱ男ですかのバレットの髪型はもうスッキリしてて好きです。I I gotta go Sephiroth, man. I know it's like the stereotypical answer, but it's it's beautiful. It's long. He takes very good care of it. I think in lore, he uses an entire bottle of conditioner. I think and shampoo to wash his hair. Um, when he turns a bad guy, clearly he keeps up that routine because his hair is immaculate throughout the rest of the game. Was Lightning in Final Fantasy XIII inspired by Cloud from Final Fantasy VII? They're very stoic characters, that's for sure. Does Cloud realize that his last name is kind of a self fulfilling prophecy? All right, let's be honest. Who is the coolest Final Fantasy protagonist? Setsa. Setsa. What's the deal with Final Fantasy characters always losing their memories? <laughs> Which character is the most different between Final Fantasy VII Original and Final Fantasy VII Remake series? Ooh, that's a good question. Zack. If all the Final Fantasy villains fought each other, who would come out on top? Do we get to play us? That's a very good question and a very good answer of who would come out on top. Sephiroth is my first go to, but I think of Arden from 15. Arden was such a fantastic villain, despite how people might feel about that game. Arden as a villain was incredible because, spoiler alert for 15 <laughs> if you haven't played it, when you really think about it, I think Arden might be one of the few villains in the franchise. That wins. He gets everything he wants. He gets revenge. He ends the、uh, Lucius Kylum bloodline and he gets what he wants his death, that sweet release.、Um, so I think I would probably go, it come down for me between Sephiroth and Arden, but I think Sephiroth ends up winning that fight、um, if they were to go toe to toe. Sephiroth in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? So, this is playable. Playable for sure. Have you heard stories about Final Fantasy VII originally being developed for Nintendo 64? <laughs> okay, well, even that. So, we've covered that on, in previous videos. They originally、um, were planning seven, I think, on the 64, but because of a lot of the hardware limitations, they just jumped over to the PlayStation, which was kind of karma, if you believe in it,、um, because Sony and Nintendo were supposed to work together on a console, and Nintendo just said, F you, Sony, <laughs> we're doing our own thing. So, Sony's like, fine. We'll go and make our own console and we're going to get Final Fantasy VII. So, thankfully, they did. They wouldn't have to worry too much about like compression and massive hardware limitations. But yeah, that's a, it's a pretty interesting developer story、uh, behind VII.、Um, and I think, like,、um, I think it was Maximilian Dude who said this recently. I didn't know this, but I think VII originally started off as a Xenogears game. Is it Xenogears? Xenogears? I think is what it was. So, I'm learning new stuff about Final Fantasy VII pretty much every day. Continue. How many cartridges do you think it would take to fit Final Fantasy VII's original game on the N64? A lot. Do you think mainline Final Fantasy games will ever return to Nintendo consoles? That exclusivity. Does Barrett have a difficult time? Okay, so it's funny he brings up Final Fantasy returning to Nintendo consoles. Again, I apologize if I'm interrupting way too much of this interview, but there's been more rumors going around about Final Fantasy VII Remake ending up on Xbox. And there was a rumor reported recently, I think it was from Game Rant,、um, that was covering a podcast. I believe Jez Corden was the person reporting on this, but apparently there's renewed talks between Phil Spencer and Microsoft and Sony. And potentially Square Enix about bringing Final Fantasy VII Remake to the Xbox. Now, again, you have to take that stuff with a massive grain of salt because for the past like two years now, two and a half years, there's been so much back and forth between VII Remake. Is it going to Xbox? Is it staying on PlayStation? And the definitive answer as of right now, obviously, there could be talks happening behind the scenes. Those talks could go successfully, they could fall through. But from what we know,、um, during the whole Xbox C- CMA, Court progress thing that happened a couple years ago.、Um, Sony's contracts got d r u g out into the open, and they have that exclusivity agreement with Square Enix to keep Seven Remake, and I would assume by proxy, its entire trilogy exclusive to the PlayStation. And that seems to be pretty ironclad at the moment. So 
whether or not it does go to Xbox, I don't know. I personally would love to see it go to Xbox because I think 7 Remake, it's not perfect, but it's a great game. And I think the more people that get to experience that game, the better. And it's also better for the overall health of the franchise and Square Enix as a whole, because if they want to make more money, um, you got to go multi-platform. If you want to be more successful, you got to go multi-platform. And historically, Square's games obviously don't sell as well on Xbox platforms compared to PlayStation, but even if it's like 2 million extra units of 7 Remake being sold on an Xbox, that's still 2 million extra units. <laughs> that's a lot more money, and that's a number you can add to the overall total of games sold for 7 Remake. So now you're looking at a franchise or an entry into the franchise that's sold over 10 million units. So. I, I cross my fingers that this game goes multi-platform. I think it's just the best option and uh, you know there's no reason for it not to other than Sony just paying a ridiculous amount of money to keep it a PlayStation console exclusive. So a lot of big can of worms in that one. <laughs> but uh, you know, who knows? Things can change. Continue. Getting through security at the airport? Yeah, <laughs> Coming into the series, what was the biggest change the team wanted to make? やっぱ1万はあのゲームをアクションにあのしたいっていうところですね。Is mm. Rebirth more open than Remake? はい、間違いないです。Is Rebirth's map yeah. bigger than Remake's? はい、もうリメイクのワールドマップはもうこんなこんなぐらいになってると思います。Are the side quests better in Rebirth? そうですね。あの非常にこうどのあのリメイクからもそうですし、Very curious about the side quests. ラベルも非常によく作り込まれていると思っています。why such a focus on side content this time around? What does Biggs and Wedge still being alive mean? For yeah, and that makes sense. Um, it would feel really weird to have a, a bigger open world type of experience with very little to do. Um, obviously, Final Fantasy XV, we bring that up from time to time. There was not a lot to do in that world. There was some gas stations, a couple of cities, uh, but it was mostly hidden dungeons that you had to go explore. It didn't really bother me. I loved that game to pieces. I loved just traveling with the Choker Bros. It was so much fun. But looking at the original FF7, there was so much side stuff that you can do in that game and hidden places to visit and different creatures to find. So I think it's the expectation of open world games nowadays um, to include that kind of stuff and some games can get away with not having a huge bustling open world one of the ones i love the most is ghost of tsushima if you have a playstation 4 or 5 and you have not played ghost of tsushima what are you doing <laughs> it's a fantastic game and that world it takes place obviously in the past so there's no massive cities there's no cars there's no airplanes there's no gas stations there's small villages here and there there's shrines um there are like refugee camps there are mongol encampments or mongol camps rather um, but that world is just so beautifully crafted that it doesn't need a big bustling city and, and tons of people traveling its roads. The character, the world has so much character rather, and it's a really beautiful thing. So some games can get away with not having a lot in their open world, but I think most people expect a pretty decent chunk of stuff to do in Rebirth. So For the story. I want to know what happened to Wedge. Is he still alive? Did he survive the Shinra fall at the tower? Did Jesse make it out of Final Fantasy VII Remake alive? <laughs> Would you ever go to a restaurant called Sector 7? Yes. Just be careful ordering anything that comes on a plate. <laughs> but I assume you would go to a bar called Seventh Heaven. Have you ever seen the show Seventh Heaven? Have you ever considered putting a sidebar? Seventh Heaven is a very strange show. I remember watching some of the episodes as a kid, not thinking much of it, but looking back on it as an adult, that's a weird ass show. <laughs> not to mention the stuff that came out with the, the actor that played the father. It's a mess. Secret pinball elevator in the office? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite arcade machine? What's cooler, riding a motorcycle or snowboarding? Does Final Fantasy VII Rebirth have snowboarding? No snowboarding, confirmed. Again. Is Gold Saucer in Rebirth? <laughs> Got you. Can you play the mini games? What's the best mini game in Rebirth? 
本当にたくさんミニゲームあるんで、I cannot wait to play Queen's Blood. That's going to be so fun. Which mini game from the original Final Fantasy VII received the biggest change for Rebirth? Chocobo Racing looks very robust. Is the CPR mini game still in Rebirth? <laughs> Does your save data from Remake transfer into Rebirth? So we... Just how safe can Sephiroth get? Sephiroth <laughs> I think a certain party member might disagree. Party member? Aerith. Aerith. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> Which mainline Final Fantasy game has the best combat system? I would agree. <laughs> Seven Remake is my favorite. Do you have a favorite fake rumor about the original Final Fantasy VII? Yeah, that's a good one. I remember the whole speaking on the era thing. There was、uh, so many rumors on the internet, and like my friends would swap about, like, you can bring Aerith back, you can, you can re- resurrect her. There's like a special Phoenix down <laughs> that you can find and revive her. And there was like rumors of getting Sephiroth to join your party. And obviously, you couldn't do any of that unless you had a Game Shark, but、um, it's just like the legend of bringing back Aerith was、uh, pretty funny to think about in hindsight. If you could change your name, To any Final Fantasy characters, what would you choose? Nanaki. Were you aware、Good、that、name. Jenova Chen from that game company changed his name to Jenova because of Final Fantasy VII? <laughs> really? <laughs> would you ever remake Advent Children? <laughs> Were you aware that、I、the Marvel、so、director. I w a n for them to incorporate Advent Children in some way into this remake trilogy. If they can do it in part three and have us play through that experience, that would be super cool.、Um, even if it's just like a new movie, I think a redone Advent Children would be sick. Yeah, DaCosta used Final Fantasy VII Advent Children as a、yeah. pitch for the movie. Name an emotion. Yeah, so that was something I never reported on. I never found time to slide it into a video, but the director of the Marvels was doing an interview with, I believe, IGN. And she said that the action sequences in Advent Children directly inspired the action sequences in the Marvels. And I haven't seen a Marvel movie in a very long time. I think the last one I saw was Spider Man. It's either Spider Man No Way Home or the second Doctor Strange. I forget which one comes first. But I kind of want to check out the Marvels purely for the action sequences just to see like, if it really is like, super inspired by Advent Children. Because Regardless, regardless of how you feel about the story of Advent Children, the action sequences are top notch and still hold up to this day. So I would very much love to see it. Name a random object. Mouse. Give me a descriptive word. Name a Square Enix franchise. What's the strangest game title Square Enix has ever come up with? Racing Lagoon. Racing Lagoon? Can you think of a game name that was rejected? <laughs> What if we just made up our own title? <laughs> yeah, I actually, we, we already did it actually. How does Chrono Trigger Beautiful Passionate Mouse? <laughs> What is the third game in the remake series called? No more s a n s e But if I guess it, you'll tell me, right? Yeah, I've joked that it's like Matrix related. You can do like Final Fantasy VII Reloaded.、Um, is it Revelations, the third one? I forget what the fourth Matrix was.、Uh, I'm very curious to see what it is. But if I guess it, you'll tell me, right? <laughs> Reimagine? <laughs> Reframed? I don't like that one either. <laughs> reloaded? <laughs> yeah, reloaded. <laughs> returns? <laughs> Cloud returns? <laughs> Cloud returns. Aerith <laughs> returns. That's very loaded. <laughs> Lightning returns. <laughs> Lightning <laughs> crosses over. <laughs> Revengeance. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> okay, scolding from ethics. <laughs> What's the deal with guns in Final Fantasy? Sometimes they kill someone, other times they just take down a little bit of HP. Good question. What was the biggest point of debate within the team when making Final Fantasy VII Remake? 
どこまでこだわってあのこう表現を上げるかっていうところはやっぱ議論になりましたね。Was there an idea for a remake that was scrapped because it strayed too far from the original? How do you pronounce this character's name? What was up with their cameo in remake? What's the best RPG series outside of Final Fantasy? I never played The Witcher. Why did Final Fantasy VI resonate with you so much? 中学生とかだったんで、あの自分でゲーム体験、実際に体験できるファンタジーみたいなものって、やっぱりその当時なかったので、非常に衝撃的でしたね。Is that one? That's the same answer for me, except for seven.、Um, as a little kid, I got bullied a lot in school. I hated school. I did really well in school, but I hated it. So to, to be able to leave school and come home and, and for like a couple of hours sit and play. Final Fantasy VII and just explore that world and not think about what happened at school or like worrying about homework or anything like that was super cool. It's like a really cool form of escapism as a kid. And still your favorite? Do you think that most people's favorite Final Fantasy game is the one that got them into the series in the first place? What is the big? I'd agree with that. It's almost like a Doctor Who situation、um, where you, you have like the actor who was playing the Doctor when you first got introduced to the show, and then you have your favorite Doctor. So for me, the actor that was the Doctor when I got introdu introduced to it was David Tennant's Doctor, the 10th Doctor. But my personal favorite Doctor is Peter Capaldi, the 12th Doctor. So I think it's kind of like a Final Fantasy situation with that as,、uh, as well, as two. <laughs> Biggest improvement from remake to rebirth. How do you think people are going to react to that scene? You know the one. How much of Rebirth was developed in parallel with Remake? Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. Did you ever just consider? I imagine Nojima san probably has the whole thing mapped out in his head.、Um, so, in, in doing it in the form of a trilogy, being able to、uh, just kind of think as you go, like, yeah, this is where we're headed, and he knows where you're going, it, it must be super helpful. Calling it Remake 2, or is that just too simple? What do you think the series would have been called if it wasn't Hironobu Sakaguchi's final attempt? Will there ever truly be a final Final Fantasy? I don't think there will be a final Final Fantasy. Perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> That was fun. I really like when they do things like this. They've done them for,、uh, I think they did it for Resident Evil 4 Remake. They did it with Street Fighter 6, I think.、Um, Just to kind of see the, the developers sit down and do like a really fun, casual interview that isn't usually asking them the same five questions over and over again. <laughs> and they can just kind of rapid fire through them and、uh, be kind of more、uh, loose with their responses and the questions given. But、um, yeah, I'll leave a link to the, this video in the description below so you guys can watch it without me yapping over it. But、uh, this is new for me. I've never done this type of reaction video before. I've done a couple of Let's Plays before, but sitting down and reacting to something, never done it before. But I thought it'd be kind of cool just to kind of listen to Hamaguchi's、uh, answers on the fly and just kind of like give my own responses to them and kind of、uh, go a little bit deeper into what he was saying. But、um, I love these things. 129 rapid fire questions <laughs> is so much fun. But with that being said, I am Curious Cordura. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below,、uh, maybe about this whole reaction setup. Up. <laughs> maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. And、uh, do you guys enjoy these types of videos? I think they're really fun. It's always cool to see the developers just kind of relaxed and let loose and joke around a little bit. But、um, with that being said, that's the video. I'm Curious Corduroy. I will see you guys in the next video. I'm going to go get warmed up because it is really cold right now. And、uh, I'm freezing. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, and、uh, what's my sign off?、Uh, always remember to be excellent to one another. I forgot what it was. When I think about it, I can't remember it. When I don't think about it, I remember it.